I call the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Uh, Mr Speaker, I have to say with regret that I was disappointed in the contribution from the member who has just resumed his seat because I understand he's a member of the Select Committee that has considered this legislation and he really had very little to add to the parliamentary debate. This is the, the time of the debate that we really want to hear back from the Select Committee members about the point of the bill, uh, what submissions they heard, perhaps who they heard from, what they thought about it. There can be a lot of thinking that goes on during, during this stage of the bill. And that member really stood up and he said, I support the bill and uh, had a swipe at the opposition and then sat down. Um, I think he really short-changed Parliament. He has been short-changing his constituents since the election day in 2008. And I'm pleased that his tenure in this building is about to, become, uh, is about to come to an end in a little while. Um, Mr Speaker, I don't have um, the privilege of being on the Finance and Expenditure um, Select Committee, and that's why I was keen to hear from another member, Brendan Burns, my colleague, made a good contribution in which he explained some of the consideration that had gone on, but uh, the National Party member didn't take that opportunity. I was keen to hear from it because, as I mentioned, I'm not a member of that Select Committee. This, this bill is actually in the name of one of that member's colleagues. It's in the name of Craig Foss, who's also the chair of the select committee that considered it. That's interesting. Um, I'm sure that he was, because, because of his personal integrity, I'm sure he was able to distance himself from any potential conflict in that, in that regard, being both the proponent of the bill and the chairperson of the select committee. But I am a bit surprised as to why the Chair of the Finance and Expenditure Select Committee actually had this bill in his name. Generally, the practice has been, and it's not without exception, but generally the practice has been that a private bill uh, that is promoted in regard to a specific organisation is introduced to the House and followed through by the member in whose electorate uh, that organisation is based. If, if you had, if you had uh, for example, the Independent Fishery Amendment Bill uh, wanting to be introduced by independent fisheries, it would be in my name because that organisation is in my electorate. Westpac is actually in Auckland Central, but the member for Auckland Central doesn't seem to have had any input into this bill at all. I don't think she's on the Select Committee. If she did, if she did serve on the Select Committee as the member for that electorate currently, uh, and, and therefore the member who's responsible for the head office of Westpac New Zealand, she hasn't taken the opportunity to have a call in this debate. So I'm a bit puzzled about the origins of this bill, Mr Speaker. I'm a bit puzzled about why it's in the name of Craig Foss. Um, but leaving that aside, I'm supportive of it. I think it's really important in New Zealand that we have a robust and accountable banking sector, and this bill um, adds to that. It adds to a spectrum of measures that we have in place to ensure that confidence that we can have. Basically what the bill does uh, is provides for the vesting of certain assets and liabilities of Westpac Banking Corporation's New Zealand institutional business in Westpac, New Zealand. Um, I agree with the proponents of this bill that the only way that can be achieved is through legislation. Mr. Mr Speaker, I want to raise another point, and again I'm frustrated by the contribution from the National Party members on the Select Committee, because what I haven't heard was whether there was any discussion at the Select Committee about the fact that Westpac, the, the bank was the point of this legislation. Westpac is the government's uh, bank. And I'm not sure if there was any discussion about whether that should continue to be the case without any competitive tender at all, without any process for reviewing whether taxpayers, the National Party is always going on about value for money and fairness for the taxpayers, and, and while Shane Arden is in this House, he should take up the mantle of the responsibility that he has been given and not hark back to
to history, he has been given a position of being a member of the party that is in government. And therefore, he should take the opportunity of that responsibility and privilege to look at all the issues that are before him. So, the Westpac Bank is the government's primary bank. Is that still the best idea? More importantly, from my perspective, did the Select Committee think about this as part of their consideration on this legislation? Well, we wouldn't know from the contribution of the National Party. The, the member who resumed his seat prior to me seeking the call said that he was the last speaker. Well, I'm, I'm not sure how his adding up is, but I hope he's not in charge of any of the finances of anything other than his own, because he said he was the last speaker. Well, actually, we have 12 speakers in a second reading debate, and he was the 10th to my counting. So we've still got um, Michael and yet another one to follow. So I hope the National Party take the opportunity and say exactly whether that issue was considered or not. Um, the other issue that I want to express some disappointment in was that in the banking inquiry, which the opposition party set up because the National Party blocked the banking inquiry in 2009, Westpac didn't make a submission. And I think for any major bank in New Zealand, but particularly the bank that holds the government's accounts, all, all the government business is done through Westpac, I would have thought that it would have improved their standing in the community and the perception of their responsibility if they had taken up the opportunity to make a submission to that opposition party's inquiry. Perhaps the government leaned on them, perhaps the Minister of Finance gave them some veiled threats about not uh, appearing before the opposition party's inquiry into banking, or maybe they just didn't bother. I'm not sure why, why that was the case, but it's certainly a disappointment to me that they didn't. Uh, Mr Speaker, another issue that I just want to mention is a little outside the gambit of this, but I think it's appropriate for me to raise it, given that we're talking about Westpac. Uh, everyone in this House uh, understands that we've had a major and significant series of earthquakes in Christchurch, the most recent being on February the 22nd. One of my constituents raised an issue with me um, in relation to banks and their behaviour towards people who had been affected by the, by the earthquake. One bank had sent out an overdue penalty notice to one of my constituents who had been evacuated from her home, had not been able to access her mail and was finding it very difficult to get through day-to-day -day living. And that bank had sent her a penalty payment notice I contacted the bank and said this was very disappointing, uh, and they agreed to r remove that payment and make sure that no other Christchurch resident was liable for such a payment if they hadn't met their dues in time because of um, the earthquake. M Mr Speaker, I want to place on record that Westpac voluntarily did that. Westpac Bank contacted me and said that they would make sure that not, none of their customers had any, any penalty payments liable to them because they'd been a, unable to pay whatever their um, due payment was because of earthquake-related circumstances. So even though I'm disappointed that Westpac didn't appear before the opposition party inquiry into banking, and I am puzzled that this bill is in the name of Craig Foss and not in the name of the member for Auckland Central, I'm gobsmacked as my colleague the member, for, member of Parliament for Christchurch Central was about the 67% pay increase that the Chief Executive of Westpac Bank um, was awarded in, in these times when so many people are losing their jobs and having to reduce their hours and facing zero pay increases. Having a 67% pay rise is quite gobsmacking. Leaving those concerns to one side and my disappointment in the contribution from the National Party and not robustly reporting back to the House about the findings of the Select Committee, I'm pleased to be able to support the progress of, the, of this bill. I think it is a bill that is considered. It's one that the provisions of are required in legislation. It will do more to support and protect New Zealanders, and I'm pleased to support its progress. Thank you, Mr Speaker.